got a lot of questions in the last couple of videos about safety and stuff like that so I thought I would give a very quick rundown on what this shunt trip does and how it operates. So down here on the screen we've got all the settings and stuff and as you can see just over here we're going to be uh, basically doing cell voltage. So we're just going to be dealing with this 55 degrees here I think. I'm not going to change any of the settings, these are the settings out of the box. So what I plan on doing is running this hot air gun, blowing up against that cell there, and I'm going to be able to watch the temperature up on the screen up here. Obviously I've got my FLIR thermal camera so I can watch it and make sure it's not getting too hot. Now set it to 55 degrees, I might actually manually move this by hand closer so it does it quicker, so there's less heat in those cells, because I really don't want to cause any damage, but I still want to see it work. Before I do that, I've got to go and turn the power off at the grid. Okay, so we're down around at my, uh, my mains board, and this is my 63 amp dual pole changeover switch. I uh, don't know if you can quite see it there. If I go that, so that's all changed back over to full grid. Okay, we're all set up and ready to go. Let's do this. There we go, on the shunt trip. The thermal camera ready, computers are ready. All right, let's turn that on. Heat's going straight onto that pack. We want to keep a good eye on it. Hopefully we don't have any problems with heat. And the pack itself. You can see now the temperature is skyrocketing. It's gone up to 41 degrees. Uh, just up here in the, in, in the center in the blue. So 47, 48, 49, as you can see now it's gone red and gone yellow, so now it's got to be there for 60 seconds. So we're just going to keep an eye on this temperature over here. That long one is getting nice and warm, we really want it to trip over fast now. Actually see that we're, um, we're pulling 20 amps out of the batteries with the hot air gun running. Okay, that long one's actually shut down because it's overheated, over 75 degrees. We shouldn't have much longer to wait now. I've actually moved it away. I'm just pull pulling the heat source away a little bit. And we're going to stop this test, just in case, just for safety reasons. Alright, yeah, let's reset. I didn't like that at all, getting that hot. Um, there has to be a better way of doing it. So let's get this fan turned on. A little Ryobi fan cranking. Cooling down those cells again. And as you can see from the screen, it's dropping down quite rapidly again. Ah, there we go, it just tripped. So you can see there, it's actually tripped. So we got that on camera. Awesome. Hey YouTube as well, thanks for tuning in to another one. Unfortunately that was a little bit of a piece together video because I didn't think I'd catch it. And I really didn't want to stress the, the cells twice in order to redo the test. So I had to sort of put the footage together a little bit. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it does prove that the shunt trip does work as designed. 55 degrees centigrade and it's got to be there for a minute for it to actually trip. To stop it obviously just tripping for a, a single one second high high voltage uh, uh, high temperature event so i also tried cold i couldn't really replicate cold and i couldn't get it to trip under cold circumstances just because i didn't want to wet the long one or put it nice or whatever i did sort of try a little bit but didn't work I did over voltage by hooking up a phone charge hooked the long one up to it tripped it instantly so that all works as well so i'm really really now happy that that watch one is going to do what i need um, I can genuinely say I'm happy with this setup. It just, it's awesome. Thanks for your support. Buy a shirt. <laughs> Cheers guys. And we're back on again.